I'm John McKee, editor of Messianic Apologetics, www.messianicapologetics.net. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for future teachings and updates. Messianic Insider is a podcast offering you a place to discuss critical and very deep issues, which affect the future and stability of our faith community. We thank you for your regular offerings and support toward our ministry efforts. You can donate online at outreachisrael.net forward slash support. And as we conclude calendar year 2020, we would like you to consider a special year-end offering as we look forward to 2021 and the new projects and assignments that the Lord has in store for us. Right now, we are still in the midst of the Christmas season, the month of December. And this is a time of year when there are a lot of things that are going on, which, of course, don't take place during the rest of the year. Now, for those of us in the Messianic community, we have already commemorated Hanukkah, we've lit the menorah, we've had our latkes, we have reviewed the story of the Maccabees. But because of Christmas being so important for at least Western society, this is a time when people have vacation off from their jobs. This is when, at least in pre-COVID-19 years, uh, people would go on vacations, uh, they'd go see family members. Uh, this is when things are just different. We have had a different broadcast schedule the past few weeks precisely because of this. Uh, last week, we didn't have an episode of the Outreach Israel Report with my parents, Mark and Margaret Huey. Instead, my brother-in-law and sister were in town because they've got time off, and we put them in the chair, and I said, finally, we are going to interview you for Messianic Insider. And yes, we do have an upcoming episode of the Outreach Israel Report uh, planned. It should be released later this week, but we've got people in town that we need to see, we need to talk to, and that's why today we have Messianic Insider and not Outreach Israel Report. But as hopefully we have demonstrated throughout 2020, we are committed to broadcasting every day and to make contact with you every day. And what we're going to be discussing today, responses to December the 25th. That was only two days ago. Uh, today is December the 27th. And as I have been monitoring social media, Facebook mostly, but also Instagram and Twitter and YouTube, I've seen a number of responses, both positive and negative, to how people in the Messianic community have approached December the 25th and Christmas. And so I've written down four points that I'd like us to go through uh, because all of us during this time of year are likely to have some time off. I mean, even I slept in the other day. Uh, you know, this is a time when things are different, notwithstanding the ongoing drama of election 2020, uh, which the next few weeks uh, are going to be very fascinating and very exciting, but also stressful for, I think, many, many people. Okay, that's just an aside. But how have I seen people respond to uh, December the 25th and Christmas? Mainly in the Messianic Jewish world, but then how others have responded to that. Hebrew rooters and even people in, you know, the church at large. All right, our first point, leading up to December the 25th, I would say 
the 22nd, the 23rd, and the 24th, I have seen far too many Messianic Jewish leaders and teachers be favorable to Christmas on December the 25th than be disfavorable to it. Now, on uh, the one hand, you see a lot of very large Messianic Jewish evangelistic organizations. They are, in no uncertain terms, reliant upon evangelical networks of support in order to continue operating. So they are not going to come against Christmas or be negatively disposed to Christmas. So I have seen some you know, Messianic Jewish leaders uh, get up there with a meme where they have a menorah and then a Star of David in the shape of an evergreen. Or they've got a Christmas tree with menorah and Star of David ornaments on it. And they stress, you know, the greatest miracle was the birth of the Messiah. And they are reading from Luke 2 and they're reading about the birth of the Messiah. Now, the birth of the Messiah, in no uncertain terms, is a biblical event. And we shouldn't hesitate to talk about it. Uh, nothing wrong there. But why would you wish your Christian brothers and sisters Merry Christmas with stars of David in the shape of evergreens and have Christmas trees with menorah ornaments and Jewish types of ornaments. Why would you do that? That to me is, is, is very confounding and very confusing. But it goes even beyond that. There are a lot of people in Messianic Jewish congregations, and I'm not talking about non-Jewish believers who are cycling through trying to figure out what this is all about. I'm talking about Jewish believers they do Christmas. I mean, they do the Santa thing. They've got the Christmas tree. They do Christmas and they do Hanukkah. And they say, what is wrong with this? Um, now, there are other people who say Christmas is just not a Jewish thing. And for Jewish people to observe Christmas would facilitate assimilation. And I don't want my grandchildren and great-grandchildren to not think that they are Jewish. But there are a lot of people in today's messy and Jewish world who do Christmas. And... That is very upsetting to me. It's very upsetting to me. And, uh, you know, some of the canned phrases would be, well, without Hanukkah, we can't have Christmas. Uh, and, of course, Christmas, they're referring to the birth of Yeshua. And some of this goes back to, you know, older Hebrew Christian modes of operation from the last century and the early, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, the, the late uh, 1800s. Uh, the Hebrew Christian movement as encouraged assimilation. And, you know, there, 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 there doesn't seem to be, at least on my part, uh, I don't seem to witness a huge amount of, well, don't, you, don't we recognize that, okay, aside from, and we're going to get into the whole paganoia uh, problem in just a moment, aside from all of the whole paganoia stuff, don't we recognize that Christmas number one on December the 25th is not a holiday specified in Scripture. Number two, the apostles and their successors did not establish Christmas on December the 25th. And number three, don't we realize that it's pretty obvious that it is intended to be a replacement for the appointed times of Leviticus 23. A lot of people in the Messianic world, Messianic Jewish world, don't want to have that conversation. And indeed, many of the Messianic Jewish peers my own age, oh, they're doing Hanukkah to make sure that they have a connection to their Jewish heritage, but they're doing all-out Christmas, Santa Claus, the tree, gingerbread, evergreen, etc. And that's not good, in my opinion. That is just not a good thing. It doesn't send the right message to the evangelical world that this is not something that Yeshua and his apostles, and even the apostles' successors established. And we are to resist assimilation. That's actually the message of Hanukkah. And Christmas, when it comes right down to it, you look into some of the history, and yes, paganoia is something we have to avoid as well. It's syncretism. It's syncretism. All right, now the second uh, point, and this comes more from what you witness in the Hebrew roots world, which is, uh, always to be expected, it plays up, you know, paganoia, 
Christmas is pagan. Okay, well, what do we do about the birth of Yeshua in the Holy Scriptures? We can't really talk about that ever at any time during the year because of all the Christmas is pagan rhetoric. You know, Satan Claus, Nimrod, Jeremiah 10 and the tree, keep Saturn and Saturnalia. They deliberately overplay their case. And, of course, a lot of people in Hebrew roots from non-Jewish backgrounds who uh, at one point in their quest found Torah and they found how bad Christmas was and then they go overboard in protesting Christmas on December the 25th. And it, and it is true. There are, there are, it is witnessed in Christian history that there were Christian people, reformers, John Knox, the Puritans, they believed that Christmas was a symbol of corrupt Roman popery. And that's more or less the line that I go along. But, you know, there are people who deliberately overplay their case. And you do wonder, why do they do this? Perhaps it was because when they were remembering Christmas, it really was an all-out affair with Santa Claus and the Christmas tree and evergreen and all kinds of other customs and traditions. And... This is their way of, I guess, covering their guilt or, or whatever. Um, and the paganoia approach to Christmas needs to be severely toned down because what you want evangelical believers who are investigating messianic things, they, they know that they have a faith heritage in the scriptures of Israel, they want to live more like Yeshua, do you want them to enter into the Messianic community being resentful of all the good things that come from their past or being very, very negative? Because when they're very, very negative, then they go on the path, well, how can I trust the New Testament? How do we even know that Yeshua is the Messiah? And those are the people that end up denying him. Instead, we want people to grow into becoming more like Yeshua and his followers, and they can reasonably tell their family members or their friends, look, um, I know that for many of you, December the 25th is a time to remember the birth of the Messiah and to remember why he came into the world. And it's really not about some of these traditions of the tree and everything else. But the Messiah did not observe this holiday. His immediate successors did not observe this holiday. And actually, there are holidays specified in Holy Scripture which portray his work for us, his first and second comings, his sacrifice, and they have significant themes of his salvation work that are actually much, much more important that we need to be considering. All right, point number three. Things have changed a great deal over the past 10 to 15 years uh, certainly from the time that our family came into the Messianic community 25 years ago, uh, more and more prominent Christian leaders are having to address that question, is Christmas pagan or is Christmas biblical? And of course, they're going to say Christmas is just fine. Uh, just don't really get into the whole Santa thing. Just focus on the birth of Jesus. That's in the Bible. Uh, Okay, I, under, I recognize that the birth of Yeshua is in the Bible, Luke chapter 2, some of the early Matthean narratives, and we, certainly as a Messianic community, don't need to be fearful of addressing this. But indeed, you know, where is Christmas as a holiday specified in Scripture? Why does Protestantism observe a holiday that not even the apostles' immediate successors observed? You know, this is something that, you know, definitely came from the 3rd and 4th centuries. Why are you doing this? And, and why do you have all this evergreen and the tree and everything else? Well, one of the main points that many Christian leaders like to make is, look, I know you're going to quote to me Jeremiah 10 and the tree that's decorated and everything else, but that is not a Christmas tree. That is not what I am doing here. That's describing ancient Near Eastern idolatry. Okay, that's a fair point. And I have been very careful and tactful uh, in my writings and in my teachings with how Jeremiah 10 and the statements of Jeremiah 10 are approached and communicated. It's describing ancient Near Eastern paganism. It's not describing the 
Christmas tree that we use today in society, that we see today in society. Okay, and so the argument is it's not describing the modern day Christmas tree, so the modern day Christmas tree is not prohibited by scripture. All right, two points there that I'd like to make. Number one, did the Christmas tree as we know it today have progenitors? Did it have ancestors in the ancient Near East? Were there ancestors of the Christmas tree where different societies would take trees and they would decorate them with, you know, gold and silver and whatnot to honor their gods and goddesses? And the Christmas tree is the latest manifestation of something that goes way, way, way back. That's not a question that tends to be probed by a lot of the Christian apologists who are having to address Jeremiah 10. But even more obvious, number two, I mean, this is even more obvious. What does a Christmas tree have to do with the birth of Yeshua? You know, a lot of the customs and traditions that surround the appointed times of Leviticus 23 that you see practiced in Judaism, they come from different things that have either taken place in Jewish history in association with, say, the Passover, or they come from, okay, well, here's a story in the Bible that's associated with one of the appointed times, and this is a tradition that comes from that. Uh, it's usually derived from Holy Scripture. Yes, there are things that are not derived from Holy Scripture, but when you go to a mainstream conservative or reform uh, synagogue today, here in the United States, or you go to a Messianic congregation to remember the appointed times, the customs and traditions that are observed originate from the biblical period. You know, a lot of the liturgy that is used was liturgy that was employed in the temple. So, where does this evergreen tree, to remember the birth of Jesus, what does that have to do with what we see in Nazareth or what we see in Bethlehem or what we see in you know, ancient Judea surrounding the birth of Yeshua? Did they even have evergreens as you, know, you're, you see today right now in the Christmas uh, season? No, the Christmas tree has nothing historically to do with the birth of Yeshua uh, the topography, the flora and fauna of ancient Judea. So why do we do it? Why or why do we do it as a society? Why do we see this as a society? And so that leads us to my fourth point. In no uncertain terms, the Christmas tree and evergreen originates from various Germanic and Nordic traditions. Uh, I've said this in various teachings before. For most people in colonial America, Christmas was actually a day when they would go to church. Yes, they might exchange some small gifts, but there was no evergreen. There was no Christmas tree. Christmas was a religious time of year. And did God work through that? It was a time to uh, be concerned with the poor and the helpless and, and everything else. Yeah, I believe God uh, worked through that. Absolutely. But it was devoid of the Christmas tree. Christmas trees didn't come to America, at least, until the massive waves of German immigrants started hitting our shores uh, in the 1830s and 1840s. And at the same time, that's when the Christmas tree was introduced to Great Britain because of the marriage of uh, Prince Albert to Queen Victoria. So in no uncertain terms, all this evergreen, all of the Christmas trees, all that, that comes from Germanic and Nordic tradition. Okay. And so a lot of Christian people would say, well, this is a festive time. You know, it's a winter time. This is a good thing. You know, trees symbolize life. All right. And it's not directly prohibited by Jeremiah 10 because that's ancient Near East. This is modern or more modern. It's just a tradition. It's, it, you know, it's Germanic and all this. All right. Now, uh, one of my hobbies that I've picked up this year, and mind you, I'm probably only at about the, the two-year-old level, uh, but, you know, with all the lockdowns and everything, you know, people have picked up new hobbies and I've been using Duolingo and I have been studying German, Eklana Deutsch. And my German is very, very bad. I, I, I do a few of the lessons on Duolingo every day. Uh, but, okay, you know, my paternal grandmother 
was of uh, German ancestry. I grew up in the greater Cincinnati area in a very big German area. Even here in Texas, we've got a lot of people of, uh, of German extraction here. And, you know, it's been something that I've wanted to do for some time. Part partially because of uh, its usefulness in biblical studies and theology, and also uh, being able to access uh, many uh, Jewish works from the 19th century, among other periods. Well, you get into, you know, studying German, studying Germanic culture, uh, you find out a few things about Christmas that, okay, things like evergreen and the Christmas tree are associated with. Uh, and these are things that people in North America are really not that aware of. You know, if you're going to say that, well, Christmas trees and evergreens, just a, you know, good, wholesome Germanic tradition. Okay, well, what do you do about Krampus? What do you do about Krampus? Krampus is basically a half goat, half demon that terrorizes bad children during the Christmas season. Go look this up. Uh, and there are activities that take place uh, today in the Alpine areas, uh, mostly in Austria, from what I can tell, but they remember Krampus. Uh, there was a movie that came out, uh, I believe it was in 2015, called Krampus. And yeah, Krampus is this demonic half goat, half human, I don't know, but it, but it is a very evil symbol of the Christmas season in certainly the Alpine areas. And, you know, a lot of these Christian apologists are good people, but they're really, their logic escapes me. Why don't you just say, look, we want to do this because we want to do this. We don't care if evergreens and Christmas trees have nothing historically to do with the birth of Jesus. We grew up with these warm and fuzzy traditions, and we think it's okay and we're just going to ignore how things like evergreen and the Christmas tree and also Krampus are ultimately a part of Germanic and Nordic paganism. All right. Okay. Fortunately with me, I'm not going to deliberately overplay the whole paganoia thing. And why do I not deliberately overplay the paganoia thing? Because... The reality is, is that our God is so big and he is so merciful. He looks beyond the thoughts that we have, the things that we have done in ignorance, the mistakes that we have made that are far bigger than the Christmas tree, evergreen, and what have you. There are things that are happening in society right now. The abortion rate, premarital sex, homosexuality, etc. that are an inevitable plague upon evangelicalism. Why God doesn't take our planet and throw it into the sun or throw it out into the cosmos so we either burn up or we freeze is beyond me. Our God is so merciful to us individually. He protects us and provides for us in ways that we are consciously unaware of. God, in his mercy, allows us time to consider the error of our ways and make corrections where needed. And I think the same is true with evangelicalism and Christmas. Moving ahead, I can definitely tell you that Christmas on December the 25th is not the future of the people of God. When we enter into the millennial kingdom of Yeshua the Messiah, and he is ruling and reigning over planet Earth from Jerusalem, do you honestly believe that Christmas on December the 25th is going to be remembered as the day when we honor the birth of Israel's Messiah? I think not. And I think that we need to, yes, we need to guard ourselves. We need to not speak in haste. Many of us observe Christmas in ignorance, but yet it was a holy and sacred time. We need to appreciate that time in the past, 
but we need to acknowledge that Christmas on December the 25th is not the future of the people of God. The Messiah of Israel, when he returns to planet Earth, is not going to reign over a worldwide kingdom where this holiday is observed. And I think that is ultimately the question that many people, many brothers and sisters, even some people, some of the older guard in the Messianic Jewish world, are afraid of asking. If you all found this content enjoyable and useful, please be sure to drop a thumbs up for this teaching as it certainly gives us more algorithm exposure on social media. As always, we thank you for your continued support of our ministry's efforts. God bless and shalom, and we'll see you again soon. In the meantime, be sure to check us out at www.messianicapologetics.net.